Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how we can filter items by type. And we're going to be talking about how we can combine streams in various different ways. The application that we're going to make today will be very simple. It will just be a basic application with a list view builder inside of it. And then we'll grab data from an API and push it into this list view builder. You can see here that we've got some basic boilerplate already built up. We have our main root widget, which builds out a material application. And then we have a stateful widget, which builds out an empty scaffold. At the top of our stateful widget, I'm just going to add a global variable called data list. This will be a list of dynamic type, which is important because we're going to have multiple different types in here. And we want to set it equal to an empty list by default so that we do not have any errors with null. Inside of our scaffold, we'll add a simple app bar. It'll just say multi item list. And then the body will be our list view builder. In here, we'll just make it so that the item count is based on our data list. And then we'll have our item builder, which will have a callback, which takes in the build context and then the current index of the item that it's iterating through. For this application, we're going to be using JSON placeholder for our API just to get some simple data. The two endpoints that we're going to be focusing on will be our photos endpoint and our posts endpoint. Now notice that photos has 5,000 items and posts only has 100 items. This will become important in the later parts of this tutorial. If we take a look at the JSON that gets served by the photos endpoint, you can see that we've got a bunch of different fields here. The ones that we're going to focus on are going to be the title and the URL, both of which are strings. For the post endpoint, we again have a bunch of different fields, but we're only going to focus on title and body in this application. Let's build our photo class. So this needs two fields, the URL and the title. And then we'll build a constructor for this. So we'll pass in URL and title. And then we'll build a named constructor, which will allow us to convert from a map to a photo object. And our map will be our JSON. And we just want to get the URL key and the title key and put them in their respective variables. We'll follow the same pattern for post. This time, instead of URL and title, we'll get title and body. We'll put that in our constructor and we'll make a named constructor so that we can convert this from JSON. So title goes from the key title and then body will come from the key body. Now let's make some imports. We need to bring in Dart asynchronous because we're going to be handling some asynchronous functions. We need Dart convert so that we can convert from JSON. We need our HTTP package and I'll alias this as HTTP. And we also need a package called asynchronous. And the asynchronous package is just a bunch of utility classes that extend the Dart async standard library. And this will come in handy when we want to manipulate our streams in various different ways. Now down at the bottom, let's create a function called get photos. This will take in an HTTP client and then it will output a future of type stream with photos inside of it. We can define the URL for this particular endpoint. So JSON placeholder.tipico.com backslash photos. And then we can create an HTTP request. We want to make a get method on this path and we need to parse the path with uri.parse. We can execute this request by calling client.send and we want to await on this client.send. This will give us a streamed response. And because we want to return a stream, we can take the streamed response, grab the stream, transform it with the UTF-8 decoder and then with the JSON decoder, then expand it by taking the items and pulling them out one at a time and then map over them one at a time, turning each one into a photo using our from JSON function. We'll follow this same pattern and create another function called get posts. This will allow us to ping the URL json placeholder.tipico.com backslash posts. And again, we're just creating a request with a get method. 
on this URL. And then we're getting the streamed response by calling client.send. And then we're taking the stream and transforming it and then mapping over it to create a stream of post object type. Now let's create a function called get data. In here we'll create our HTTP client so that we can pass it into our get photos and get posts functions. And in this function, what we want to do is get both of the streams and then sort of combine them together so that we can then serve them as one single stream. We can do this by creating what are called lazy streams. Lazy streams, as their name implies, are lazy. This means that the data doesn't actually get presented until we need it. So in this case, these lazy streams do not actually call the callback function inside of them until they have an active listener on them. So for stream one, we have a lazy stream object. And inside of this object, we're passing in a callback function. This callback function is asynchronous and we're awaiting on get photos and we're passing in the client. And we're doing the same thing for stream two, except we're doing it for get posts. So this will create the streams, but until we actually start to listen on the streams, they will not present any of the data. Now we want to funnel these two lazy streams into one single stream. And we can do this by using a stream group object. Like the lazy stream object, the stream group object comes from that asynchronous utility plugin. And stream group is a bit like a funnel. It allows us to take a bunch of input streams and merge them all into a single output stream. And we can do this by calling streamgroup.merge and then passing in a list of the streams that we want to merge together. Or we can do it by creating a stream group and then calling the add function to add each stream one at a time. Now we also want this stream to be a broadcast stream so that we can have multiple listeners listen on it at a given moment. And that's why we're calling this as broadcast stream method on the end. Now let's come back into our my homepage state class and we'll create a stream controller at the top here. For this stream controller, we also want to override the init state function and the dispose function. Inside of init state, we'll instantiate this stream controller by calling the stream controller.broadcast constructor. This creates a broadcast stream controller, which is what we're going to need. It's always a good practice inside of Dart and in any other language to clean up the stream controllers when you don't need them anymore. And if this state class goes out of scope, we want the stream controller to shut down. So we'll just call stream controller close and then we'll set our stream controller equal to null. And we've got this little question mark here as well. This just makes sure that the stream controller actually exists before it tries to close it. That way it's not calling close on null. Now let's create a function that will allow us to call to our get data function below. Now because get data is asynchronous, we can create a function called setup data and have it be asynchronous so that we can properly deal with the actual asynchronous call. So in here we can call await get data and set it equal to a new stream. And then we can use the cascade operator to pipe this stream into our stream controller. Then we can listen on the stream and we can take the data that we get out of the stream, call set state, and then add the data to our data list. So now let's add this function into our init state function here and that should wire everything up. So now let's make it so that our list view can differentiate between a photo class and a post class. First, we'll get the actual item that we're iterating through by calling data list with the index inside of it and setting it equal to a final item variable. Then we can run if checks on the item and we can check to see if the item is of type photo or it is of type post. And this is a nice piece of syntactic sugar inside of Dart. This is keyword. It allows us to specify, okay, well, if this item is of this type, we want to do this. In the case of our list view builder, we want to be able to build different widgets based on the type that we have. 
For our photo, we'll return a list tile. Inside of the title, we'll return a text widget with the item.title in it, and then the subtitle will be an image network widget with our item.url, and we'll scale the image down to half the size. For post, we're also going to return a list tile. This time, however, we're going to take our item.title and put it into a string and then put that into a text widget. And we'll do the same for our item.body inside of the subtitle property. So this way we have two different templates based on the type of data that we're getting from our stream. And so we won't have to worry about errors, for instance, calling the image widget on something that's not an image and stuff like that. Now we can build our application inside of our emulator. And you can see here we have the posts at the beginning. So here we have title and it's got a bunch of lorem ipsum text in it. And then we have the body which also has a bunch of lorem ipsum inside of it as well. If we scroll down far enough, we will actually start to hit all of the photo items. And you can see here that there is no error as a result of these photo items because we have specific widgets being built for the photo items. And we should have about 5,000 of these photo items. I'm not going to scroll to the bottom though, because that'll probably crash the emulator. So this works fairly well, but what happens if we want to have the items in a more controlled layout? Meaning we want to have, say, a photograph first, and then a post, and then another photograph, and then another post, and so on and so forth. How do we go about doing that? To achieve this effect, we want to change how our streams are being created and how they're being merged together. So inside of our get data function, rather than creating the lazy streams like we were before, we're just going to call await on our get photos and get post functions to just get normal streams. Then rather than using our stream group object, we're going to use an object called stream zip. And we also want this to be a broadcast stream, so we're going to call as broadcast stream on the stream zip. Now the way stream zip works is it allows you to pass a list of streams into it and then it takes the first events of these streams and pairs them together and then it pairs together each event following that. So we get one photo item and one post item and then we get another photo item and another post item and it keeps going like that until one of them runs out. If you guys remember we only have a hundred post items this means that we will only get a hundred photo items because once we run out of post items, it will not have an item to put in that spot. So it'll say, okay, well, we don't need any more photos. I'm going to come up to our setup data function and I'm going to change it so that it prints out the data so that you can actually see what it looks like. So here's our actual printout. You can see we have an instance of photo and then an instance of post and both of these are inside of a list. So we literally have a stream of list with one photo and one post inside of it. So we need to destruct this list so that we can get our photos and posts and then pass them into our list view. Also, rather than piping our stream controller into our get data function like before, we want to call this as broadcast stream function on this. And then we're going to listen on the stream directly again. And we're going to take the data out of the stream and call set state. This time, however, we're going to call data list.add on data index 0 and then data list.add on data index 1. Because remember, each of our items inside of the list is actually a list itself. And that list only has two elements inside of it. So data list index 0 is our photo item. And then data list index 1 is our post item. If we soft reload our application, you can see here, now we get a photograph. And then we get a post. And then we get another photograph. And then we get another post and it will keep going like that all the way down to the bottom. To further showcase how this is working, I'm just going to come into here in the list tile for the post type, 
and the leading property will set it equal to a text widget with our index to string inside of it. So this way we can actually see the index of each of our posts. You'll notice that each of our posts has a odd index and that's because the first photo is zero, then the next post is one, then the next photo is two, and then the next post is three and so on and so forth like that. If we go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that our final post is index 199. This means that we have a total of 200 items inside of our list, and we only have 100 post items and 100 photo items. So as I mentioned before, the stream zip is what's limiting the amount of photos that we're actually grabbing because we've run out of posts. If you do have something that you want to limit based on something else, this is a very easy way to do that. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.